everyone. Welcome to Ryan Reviews. This week we're talking about Across the Spider-Verse, the highly anticipated sequel to Into the Spider-Verse. Does it live up to its predecessor? Listen in to find out. As usual, my reviews consist of five categories at two points each for a total of ten points. I'll keep this mostly spoiler-free until I give my final rating, and then I will give a spoiler warning. So let's get to it. So first up is a story, and for story I'm giving it a 1.5 out of 2. Overall, I think Across the Spider-Verse has a strong story. It makes sense, we understand what everybody wants, and things unfold in a way that never feels rushed or unearned. I think the movie does a great job of subverting expectations, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in the spoiler section. And it also pays off things that are touched on early in a way that I really appreciate. The movie also has several great twists that really work, and again, they feel earned. Something I'll talk about later as well. There's also a lot going on in the story. You have Miles and his dealing with being a superhero, but he's also a high school student. We have his relationship with his parents. Then we have Gwen, who has her own arc and her own backstory, and we get that experience as well. Then we have everything going on with the Spider-Verse, and there's a lot going on there as well. And then there are just all the characters. There's just a lot of movie here, right up until the end, and I do think that they do a very good job of managing all the moving parts and not making it feel overwhelming. While I like the story, I think there are a couple of areas where the movie does get dinged a little bit for me, and that specifically is the beginning of the movie and the end of the movie. So how they choose to start the movie is a little confusing to me. There's an opening scene that to me is a little bit too long, and it's too much a part of the main narrative to really be considered a prologue. But by the middle of it, I just found myself asking, you know, what's going on here? What, what story am I, I watching? Whose story am I following? And so I got a little antsy there. And so the start, I feel like it could have been better. I feel like what we got in the beginning would have been perfectly slotted in 20 minutes into the movie and nothing would have changed. So I think that bugged me a little bit. And then the ending is a bit jarring. So... This isn't a spoiler, although I think a lot of people did not get the news that this movie is part one of two parts. And so the third act throws us a lot of twists and there's a lot of momentum going in the third act. And then it just ends abruptly and we have to wait for part two. And while even if I'd gone into it with that knowledge, I feel like it doesn't quite work because the movie itself doesn't feel like it has an ending and so it feels just unfinished and it's a bit jarring the way it ends so if you go into it with expecting that it's not terrible but I feel like the ending could have been done a little bit better so next up for me is performances and for performances I'm giving it a two so this movie is just chock full of of great voice performances and cameos like the first this is truly an ensemble and almost universally, everyone knocks it out of the park. Shamik Moore and Haley Seinfeld reprise their roles as Miles and Gwen and both give great nuanced performances at teenagers trying to balance being a superhero while withholding their secret and also dealing with the responsibilities that come with being a superhero, which they may or may not be quite mature enough to handle. Brian Tyree Henry, who's quickly becoming one of my favorite actors, uh, if he isn't already, and Luna Loren Velez reprise their roles as Miles' parents and also wonderful in their roles. The two major standouts in this movie, though, are Daniel Kaluuya's Spider-Punk, who's just having all of the fun in the world chewing up scenery whenever he's around, and Jason Schwartzman's The Spot, who's a remarkably strong villain and gives a performance that is equal parts funny, tragic, and ultimately very scary. So this all-star cast also includes Oscar Isaac, Issa Rae, Rachel Drack, uh, Karan Sani, to name a few, along with some other great cameos, which I'll not mention right now. Next up is audiovisual, and I'm giving it a 1.85. So Into the Spider-Verse had a fresh and unique look that was almost universally praised, and Across the Spider-Verse takes things up several notches. The movie looks amazing. Words can't do justice to it. It's just so rich, creative, and immersive. I think they do an incredible job of blending the different styles. Each Spider-Verse has its own look and has its own feel, and even when characters from the different Spider-Verses are interacting, they do an amazing job of blending these styles together in a way that feels seamless and, and never takes you out of it. The action also looks great. It's a bit chaotic, but generally things 
are tracked well, and I just love how clever and creative they are with some of the scenes and some of the powers, uh, specifically when the spot is involved. Another thing I'll say about the visuals is just how New York looks. As someone who's born and raised in New York and who's lived in Brooklyn and Queens for most of my life, it feels so authentic uh, from the architecture to the culture. It's really beautiful to see. It's something that, you know, I can't think of many movies that get New York as well as this gets it, um, just visually and just from a feel. So I just love just how accurate New York feels, even, you know, as it's an animated superhero movie. Uh, The soundtrack and the score are also top-notch and really add to the movie and add to the big moments. And so the only issue I had and where I had to take a little bit off was the sound mix seemed a little bit off to me. There were definitely times in the movie where I just felt like I was struggling quite a bit to hear and understand what people were saying. And, And that happened throughout and so I do ding it a little bit. So although, I mean, it's just it's spectacular looking and sounds great. There were just a couple of those moments where I just wasn't quite sure what people were saying. So next up is internal logic and consistency, which I'm actually going to give a two. There's a there's not a lot to nitpick, although I'm sure you could come up with some things here and there. But when it comes to the multiverse, it is what it is. And I'm glad that they don't spend much, if any time, trying to explain the science of what it is. They just accept that it's part of the world, and I kind of appreciate that. Like, don't give us some dumb science jargon to try to explain why things work. It's just, this is the world, this is what we have, and we'll just run with it. And I kind of appreciate that part of it. Um, there are there are a couple of stupid character choices at times, but I think it's consistent because these are choices made by teenagers, and it tracks. Uh, teenagers, especially those with immense powers, Sometimes we'll screw up, and so I'm okay with some of the choices that may or may not have made sense and that I might not have made you know, with my 40-plus years of, of life experience. What I did like about the movie and where it did pull it to a two for me over maybe me nitpicking a little bit is that there are a couple of really big twists and moments in the movie, and I feel like they did a very good job of, of earning those moments. They, the seeds were planted early on, and the twists worked. I didn't expect it, and I think it was shocking to most people. And again, they were earned and felt organic. It didn't feel like a twist for the sake of being a twist. It felt like, all right, this this all makes sense, and I really appreciated that. And finally, we get to the feels. Uh, Feels for me, I'm going to give a two. So I love the way that the movie captures the family dynamics, not just with Miles, but also with Gwen. And even some of the other characters throughout the movie really does a great job of exploring the complexities, uh, not only of being a teenager, but also of being a parent. The movie also has some great moments that are all just built around relationships, people hiding things. It's a common thread throughout, and it works really well. And it's a source of a lot of the tension throughout the movie. I think the movie does a great job of capturing what it's like to be a teen and feeling like the weight of the world's on your shoulders, which in this case it literally is. And I think the movie's also very funny, but the humor never feels forced. And I think there's just plenty to like in this movie uh, and plenty to feel in this movie, whether you're a kid, whether you're a teen, whether you're an adult. I think it does a really great job of getting emotions out of the viewer. So overall, Across the Spider-Verse gets a 9.35 from me. Uh, Some highlights, uh, just stunning visuals. Uh, There's a great twist and just fantastic voice performances. Some of the lowlights, the beginning and the ending I had some issues with. I feel like they could have been done better. And there were some issues with the sound mixing, but otherwise, just a fantastic movie and great follow-up. So now I'm going to get a little bit into spoilers. Not going to spoil a lot, but definitely if you have not seen the movie, I would say pause this and come back to it later because there are some good things in it that I don't want to ruin for you if you're going to see it and care about that thing, those things. So first up is MVP for me. So for MVP, it was a little tricky. This is really an ensemble And it's tough to pinpoint one person that's the MVP. So I'm going to go with my favorite performance, which I alluded to earlier, is Spider-Punk. He's not in the movie long, though he does play a pivotal role in the plot. But Daniel Kaluuya is having the time of his life playing this anarchist, 70s punk-inspired version of Spider-Man. Not only is the voice acting great, but the animation is really also interesting. It's kind of washed out and looks nothing like anything else that we see on the screen, but it blends seamlessly. But you just, you you, you can't take your eye off of the character. And so it, it, it's an amazing feat because it's a character you can't take your eyes off. And the voice performance is so great that you just want to hear him talk the whole time as well. 
So in a movie with tons of great characters, he's the most fun by far. So for my favorite moments, uh, so my three favorite moments in no particular order, first up is the Donald Glover cameo. I thought there was an awesome moment for many reasons. First of all, he was the inspiration for the character. If you go back and look into the story of how this character came to be, you know, he plays a pivotal role in, in, in inspiring that. Second is that he was the first person to voice Miles Morales. And then it was a callback to his appearance in Spider-Man Homecoming. So it was just a great full circle moment. Second up for me is Miles finding out that he's not on the right Earth. So we find out early in the movie that Miles was bit by a spider from a different Earth. And so that has an effect on his DNA and makes him this kind of anomaly. He uses a machine to escape that's supposed to scan you and then send you home. And when it takes him home, he has this heartfelt moment with his mother. And we find out he's not on his home Earth. And it just it's a great reveal. All the seeds were planted earlier. And it really brilliantly sets things up. I was a little disappointed the timing of it only because of how the movie ends pretty much right there. But I really love the way that was was set up and I'm excited for how it's going to pay off. And my third favorite moment, I love the fight with the spot and there are several fights with the spot. Uh, I think it's just it's just really clever how they use the powers and how both he and Miles use his powers to gain an advantage in their fight. It was some of the most visually interesting and creative stuff that I've really seen in, in any of the recent superhero properties and works really well and makes me excited to see now that he's grown in power, like, what are they going to do with him? Because at first, he's just kind of a villain of the week. He has powers, but they're kind of innocuous. And now he, he might be the most powerful being in the universe or in the multiverse. So it's really interesting to see where they go with it. But I love I love the fights with him. So for my final thoughts, look, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was one of the best superhero films, animated or not. So Across the Spider-Verse was always going to have or going to face a tough task to make a worthy follow-up. And I think Lord and Miller succeeded. It's a great movie, and it really does live up to its predecessor in many ways. And in many ways, it surpasses it. I think it has a great story with tons of heart, and it takes the visual up three notches, which I didn't think was possible. And... As I mentioned before, if there's a critique, it really just comes down to the two things. I think the opening was very much focused on Gwen. And while she's an important character, and I, I liked her story, and I think her story is important, I felt myself wanting to see Miles. And so it felt like you know waiting 15 minutes to see Miles and see what was going on with him was a little bit too long. And all of that stuff with Gwen, I feel like, could have been given to us after we found out what was going on with Miles. So I didn't love the way it started. Uh, but the bigger issue for me was really just how it ended. I totally get that this is effectively the middle movie in a trilogy, and I'm totally fine with that. But I still feel like the ending left me wanting. If you compare this, you know, well, any good trilogy middle movie still feels like its own thing. It feels like it, it has its own beginning, middle, and end. If you take Empire Strikes Back, while Empire Strikes Back is the middle movie in a trilogy, it has its own story. It has a very clear ending, even though it doesn't tie everything up. And there is an opening for what the next movie is going to be, it still gives us a satisfying ending. And I feel like this doesn't. And maybe it just had to do with how it was edited or or how it gave us the story, but I feel like there was almost there was so much momentum leading to the end that it just felt like it fell off of a cliff. And so I just didn't love that. It's barreling towards something and then just ends abruptly. As great as the movie is, it just doesn't quite stand on its own as a movie because it's going to rely a lot on the follow-up. That being said, it's right up there with Into the Spider-Verse of being among the very best superhero films ever made. And I'm really excited for the follow-up, which is due out in March of 2024. It's going to be a long wait. So if you haven't seen it yet, go see it now. You won't be disappointed. And until next time, I'm Ryan George, and thanks for checking this out. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And while you're at it, leave a review. We can be found on all social media platforms at portable underscore whole. And we can be found on any of your favorite podcast platforms at Portable Whole Publishing. For any information about us, upcoming releases, or podcasts, you can check us out at portablewholepublishing.com. And to email us, email us at portablewholepub at gmail.com.